Hello, I'm JW. Today's dubious item is this item here. Now this is some kind of uh, testing piece and it's sort of along the line to the old neon screwdriver though this is a uh, somewhat more updated version. Nevertheless it's probably just as dangerous and useless so we'll have a look at that. Now this I uh, say is a Chinese type import thing. It comes in this uh, plastic card and it's got the uh, contact points there. It's actually got two of them as it allegedly can detect things when it's connected to the wire directly and also just by placing it near the wire without actually making any connection or basically via the insulation. So here's the item of dubiousness and again it's mostly in uh, Chinese or whatever but it does say 12 to 220 volts. Professional hand tools manufacturer and it's got this unprofessional symbol at the bottom as well. On the back various uh, usage instructions again mostly in uh, non-English items but uh, there is a little bit on the side here. Let's take it out of the uh, wrapping. This was only 99 pence or 99 cents or something in the vicinity. So let's just have a look down here. So as we can see here, it's basically got uh, two ways of operating it. You can either place it directly onto the actual live wire. So it's going onto that and then you're holding the end because it just shows you the voltage. And then the other method is placing it uh, at right angles to the insulated conductor. So it's not in direct contact with it. And then if you hold the end of it, it either a little symbol comes on if it's a phase or the line, and no symbol if it's ground. Well, it says ground line, so presumably it's line and neutral it's referring to there. And again, it's just a little symbol coming on or not, depending on whether it's connected or not. And so we've got all the other writing there, which is in other languages. But uh, so it's a fairly obvious device in terms of its operation. So here's the thing itself metal uh, point of it at the end in the shape of a screwdriver, although you're not going to do much screwdriving with that because it's very thin and not going to be up to the job of turning very much. 12 to 250 volts AC and DC. CE device there which uh, obviously could mean anything. And then the top we've got one marked inductance and the other one direct. So presumably the deal is on the direct. It's when you're shoving this directly onto a live conductor and it's using your body as the basically the uh, return path for the micro amount of current to display the voltage. And then the inductance one is going to be along the lines of those sort of uh, one things with the red LED in the end, except this one doesn't have an LED and it doesn't have any batteries, so it's purely relying on the even smaller current to go through just to illuminate a little tiny symbol on the display here. Plastic clip on the back. And that's pretty much it. There's no uh, say no batteries here, nothing else needed. It's entirely powered from the thing itself type of item. And it also appears to be glued shut, so opening of course uh, could be a challenge, but we'll open it later anyway because although it's going to get destroyed, that was the point of buying it. So let's see if it actually works. Got a uh, two core mains lead here. And this is connected to the voltage here, which is about 250 at the moment. So the deal with this is just to hold the uh, inductance thing there and then it should have a little symbol if the thing is actually powered so let's just see what we get there well as you can see we're not really getting a lot there but if we put it at just the correct angle just about see the little symbol coming on in the display but of course depending on how you position the wire it really determines whether the thing comes on or not so uh, definitely not a particularly reliable item although it does uh, kind of work as described. So if we try and put it at sort of right angles as it suggested, we get nothing. But it does seem to work at sort of on a angle like that. And then if we turn it there it gets a bit brighter and if we turn it a bit more it goes off completely. So uh, yes it does kind of work but really uh, not particularly reliable. And bearing around this is about the best case scenario. This is a two core flex here so there's no earth inside there. And all we've got there is literally just the line and neutral and the thing at the end isn't actually even powered so all we've essentially got is just one conductor inside. I'll just turn on the thing, it's actually a light and uh, yeah now we're not really getting anything at all. It's sort of a very faint symbol there. Again, it depends on how far away from your finger and other things we go up there it's a bit brighter than it's fading in and out and uh, not very reliable at all so at least that part of it does appear to function 
Now this is the other intended use, which is directly in contact with a live conductor. We can see already that the symbol is on, even when it's not connected, so I suppose that's uh, something. And uh, what you're supposed to do then is touch the one that says direct at the top here, and it's supposed to show the actual voltage. And uh, well, sure enough, it does actually show. So go in a bit closer and have a look there. So that's without touching the thing, and then it basically just fills in the display. So it's obviously got all of the different voltages listed there. So 220 at the end, 110, 55, and 36. So it's giving you some sort of indication as to what it is. In this case, it's the full amount, or somewhat more than the 220. And uh, as soon as we press there, it actually does the same thing. That shows the whole voltage. That just makes the little symbol at the bottom super dark and shows the voltage as well. Although that actually goes down to 12, so it's not entirely clear what the uh, point of that is. So that's yeah, 12, 36, 55, 110, 220, and that's just... Oh, that does all of them now as well. So, I know it doesn't, it's just faded off. So that apparently only does 36 and above. That would do all of it, including the little symbol at the same time. So not really clear why they got the two buttons, but nevertheless they have. And of course if we unremove it, then of course it will uh, go off completely. Now you would expect this to... Uh, indirect thing to still work because it says it's right up against the terminal there's only a few millimeters difference but yeah as before it's not really uh, showing much with that at all so does it work well yes it does work is it recommended for use well of course not because uh, reliability is a big issue here as we have just seen and of course it's the same as the old neon screwdrivers in the fact it's relying on your body to make contact with the thing so any kind of fault inside here and you're basically poking your finger into a 240 volt outlet, so certainly not recommended. So now I think we're just going to pry this open and see what's inside. Not a whole lot, you would imagine, because it's all going to be a single blob device in the middle, presumably, for the actual LCD there. One thing to note here is you've actually got this, what looks like a bubble in the corner. What it actually is, is the plastic film on the front of the LCD hasn't been removed, so they've just stuck it in there and basically left the film on underneath the bezel, so uh, yeah, quality. Now of course this isn't designed to open, it appears to be welded shut or glued shut or both, so we're going to have to uh, go in there and uh, pry at it. So let's see what we have here. Well, we have a screw here, so that's quite handy. So maybe we don't have to uh, pry at it at all, so let's see if we can get that open and uh, what's underneath. So we should be able to... Uh, unscrew. This appears just to be a recess where that clip uh, clipped in, literally. So can we actually get this thing open? Well, yes we can. So there you go, it doesn't actually appear to be glued shut at all. This line around the edge is presumably just a moulding line from where the uh, plastic thing was made, so it is just the little cover on the back. Cheap o matic Right, let's see if we can just get these other screws out of here. And of course the one over there. And now we can see what's contained inside. So, that's just presumably a piece of metal goes straight through to the tip there. We can uh, just confirm that with the meter here. Yeah, so that is just a chunk of metal straight through to the end of it, so uh, mains voltage there. There's the little LCD with a uh, very small little uh, zebra strip on the side there. I thought I would just press onto the uh, circuit board like that, similar to what we saw in the uh, clock that we took apart a while ago. The two buttons, which are just little sort of metallized plastic things, it would seem. Yeah, they're not uh, magnetic at all, they feel like plastic, so it's probably just uh, chrome-plated plastic or whatever. And then all we've got is this little titchy circuit board. So we've got a coily bit of wire tacked on the end, and that's what would make contact with the actual probe screwdriver piece. So that's basically coming straight in here. And then we've got this chain of resistors here, which just basically goes along. And then you see those taps coming off for each of the LCD segments there, 
And at the end of the thing we've got a couple more resistors and that goes up to the top there. That is the top button that's marked direct. And then this one is the one that says inductance on it. So literally it's just wires in at the bottom. And then this button essentially goes around to the pad there via the resistor. And then the others it's just a voltage divider essentially. So depending on the voltage applied will turn on one or more of the segments. And it's using basically your body as the uh, capacitive ground at the end here. So we can just get the values of those resistors in there. So on the main one coming in we've got uh, 1005, so that's presumably 100 with five zeros after it, so what's that going to be, 10 mega ohms or something in that vicinity. And then the others there, and various different values obviously to get the different voltages across the various LCD parts. And the one that's marked uh, inductance which bearing on, doesn't actually go directly to that uh, input pin, it's sort of around the bottom there. And what's that, 275, so that's uh, 27 and 5 zeros after that. And then right at the top here on the output of the chain, okay, it's the 1005, so 100 with 5 zeros, so that would be the 10 meg. Anyway, all pretty uh, high value resistors. And obviously it's just, say, dividing the voltage amongst the LCD segments and uh, there's just about enough tiny current there to uh, switch the thing on. Bearing in mind, LCDs require almost no current to actually uh, activate the segment, so uh, they're just, say, relying on the microscopic current to do that. There's the LCD there, so a little tiny item there, just reflective backing, of course, no lighting or anything in it. And there's just a little zebra strip on the back. This one appears to be all black, so pretty much difficult to see the segment lined inside. But it will be the same as on that uh, digital clock that we saw, so it's going to have sort of conductive paths going through that. And of course those would line up with the conductive pads here on the edge of the board. So basically just press it on those to provide a connection through to the front. And as we saw previously, what looks like the uh, a bubble in the end of it, just take that strip off completely, uh, what is actually the bubble is in fact just the protective film there, which they also just left on because they couldn't be asked to actually remove it. But bearing in mind, this was a dollar, so uh, we don't expect anything of any particular quality there. And again, there's the edge of it, which we'll just about make out the conductive tracks on the edge of the glass there. So that's what's inside one of these red testing pen type things with the liquid crystal display and uh, very cheap. Do they work? Well not really. I mean they do obviously work if you uh, jam the thing in the socket but then say you're relying on the fact of those resistors inside and being one well, those are only surface mount jobs which uh, who knows how well they're going to fare with mains voltage shoved across them. And of course the other bit uh, though it kind of did sort of work when it could be bothered Certainly not a reliable method of indication. It would be far better off getting one of those pens that run on the uh, AA batteries with the LED in the end that lights up when you wave it near a live conductor. And even those aren't exactly perfect, but they're way better than one of these. So uh, that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.